happen. All right, you may be seated. Yeah, it is all the way in. Didn't do this on Sunday. again very good okay well I can turn this back around this way well we got some announcements here tonight first of all I need to remember some folks in our prayers here this evening Dorothy Bryson Bonnie Phillips Linda Hill Vi Arnold Don Smith Sarah Sean Halls Sissy Felton Denise Terrell I also want to thank you all the folks that were praying for the safety of our children as they headed back to Indiana Sunday night. Uh, it's always a tough time to say so long. You know, you're a parent here, you know what we're talking about. Uh, it's always a tough time to say so long, especially when uh, they're traveling during the, the, the darkness through the nighttime hours, six hours, six hour plus drive. And, but thank God they got there safely. We praise the Lord for that and I thank you for your prayers. Saturday morning, 10 o'clock, soul winning and visitation. Got a business meeting next Sunday night after the evening service. And then in a couple of weeks out from that, we've got our Sunday uh, luncheon after the morning service, followed by an afternoon service and no evening service that night on the 28th. Uh, just so you know, the track rack was refilled yesterday. Found a bunch of tracks in a box uh, that was in my office, so praise the Lord. I'm glad about that and got that track rack filled right back up again. Keep passing them out. What a blessing to see the track rack emptying out. Amen. I mean, it, that means people are doing what they're supposed to be doing. So praise the Lord and just keep doing it and uh, keep giving out the gospel. And someday we'll see the fruit. Uh, Vacation Bible School, August 11th through the 14th. 11th through the 14th. All right. Why don't we uh, sing another hymn here? Uh, we'll stand if you're able to do so. One more hymn, and then after that, we'll have the offering and offering prayer. So we'll stand together. We'll sing hymn number 28. Hymn number 28. Great is thy faithfulness. Do all three verses here this evening. Number 28. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not, thy compassions they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever will be. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning, my morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Summer and winter and springtime and harvest, sun, moon, and stars in their courses above, join with all nature in manifold witness to thy great faithfulness, mercy, and love. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning, my morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, 
thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Pardon for sin and a peace that endureth thine own dear presence to cheer and to guide. Strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. Blessings all mine with ten thousand beside. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Oh, praise God for a faithful God. Never forsake us. Never leave us. Whew. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Brother Kerry, if you would please pray over our offering this evening. We praise you, dear Heavenly Father, Lord. We praise you, Lord Jesus, for your faithfulness, Lord. We praise you, Lord Jesus, that you are true, Lord, and real in our lives, Lord. And just pray to God now, Lord, that you give Pastor Markowski the words to preach. Yes, Lord, Lord please. Us ears to hear and want us to apply them to our life, Lord. And now, Lord, may you bless the gift and the gift the giver, Lord, to the part of your kingdom, Lord. Yes. And we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, ma'am, for that. Before we get into uh, the Word of God tonight, i got a couple of missionary letters to quickly read for you. Uh, the first one is from the Marco family. March 2024 update says, Medical Mission, it says, The month of March brought a first to FBC, and what a thrill it was. We had a well-qualified group of doctors and medical professionals come and help us put on a free medical mission for those who financially cannot afford institutionalized help. Every prospective patient after registration was sent to spiritual counseling where the gospel was shared with them. 136 patients registered and were processed while 70 plus made a public profession of salvation. This medical service provided free medicine as well as free minor surgeries this kind of outreach opportunity is very dear to my heart. It has been our prayer and burden to provide these types of services on a regular basis. What a beautiful sight it was to see both body and spirit minister to all in one place. They also have a Bible printing machine. After many years of prayer and patience, God finally opened a door providing our ministry with the machines and tools to print whole Bibles from cover to cover. This is a much needed ministry and we couldn't be more honored that our property and building will be a place where God's words will be printed. These machines, when up and running at full speed, have the capability of producing 7,000 Bibles each month. Please pray that we can be up and running soon. 
We are now in the process of getting everything set up. What a blessing. And then uh, from the Ellis family, Rock of Ages Ministries, Dr. Terry Ellis, he said this, Dear Pastor and Church, to say that Peggy and I have been busy would be an understatement. God continues to open many doors of opportunity as we dedicate ourselves to fulfill the call of God upon our lives. Our travels have taken us to multiple states, correctional facilities, and churches over the last few weeks. I was able to participate in our annual Blitz in the Montgomery, Alabama region as we gathered with Rock of Ages missionaries, pastors, and volunteers. We had the opportunity to preach in multiple facilities throughout the area with a total of 182 trusting Christ as their personal Savior as a result of the combined efforts of the missionary team. During our visitation in the cell blocks, I had the opportunity of leading one man to the Lord. It was exciting to see him in the services that night, rejoicing in the Lord, confirming his salvation. I also had the opportunity to preach to approximately 120 men in one service. During the invitation, seven men came forward to receive Christ as their personal Amen. Savior. Our church meetings have also gone extremely well as we had the opportunity of seeing one come forward during an invitation to receive Christ into their heart. Please rest assured we are doing all we can to put your missions, dollars, and support to good use in reaching souls with the gospel of Christ. Dr. Terry Ellis, President, Rock of Ages Ministries. Brother Sean Halls, how'd you, how'd it go this past Sunday night at the, minis at the prison? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 52 in attendance and two more names written down in glory. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Amen. God's still saving souls. Amen. All right. Acts chapter number one. Acts chapter number one. We're going to, boy, we're going to just do a, a little quick review here. Uh, mentioned last week one of the interesting things that during the time that Jesus spent, with his disciples before his ascension during that 40-day period, we don't read about anyone being converted, uh, becoming a follower of Christ. No salvations during that. Now, it just it's possible. It could have happened, but there's nothing that's acknowledged there in the Bible. Jesus had another objective during that period, I believe. He wanted to strengthen the believers, teach and admonish them, make them stronger in their service for the Lord. Jesus spent 40 days doing this, and there's something for us to learn there, like I mentioned last week. We need to have a balance in our Christian lives. You know, we'd love to see more souls saved, and that's, of course, important. That's bottom line. That's, that's the whole goal. But in order to be able to do that and to do an effective job and be better at it, we need to grow. We need to grow. We need to be under the teaching of the Word of God, under the preaching of the Word of God. We need to be in prayer. We need to be in our Bibles. Uh, we need to spend more time around things of God, strengthening us for the ministry. We need to spend time in church. It's so important, being in church. Amen. And uh, we also need to be, realize that God's perfect timing may be completely different from our timing. We then read in chapter 1, verse 6, it says, When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel. They're wondering, you know, they're thinking that Jesus is going to be the, the king. They're going to set up the new kingdom. They're going to get rid of the Roman rule, but that's not what Jesus was there for. He basically tells them in verse number seven uh, to get their minds off of the physical kingdom and get their minds back on the kingdom of God, get their minds back on uh, service to the Lord and, uh, and winning souls. Verse number eight said, but ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. So after you receive the Holy Ghost, you're receiving this power, and boy, oh boy, are you going to be effective in your ministries. When you have an opportunity to be in a ministry doing anything for the Lord, singing, do anything, uh, soul winning, you need to pray and ask for Holy Ghost power. You need to seek help and uh, you seek that power and you receive that power and you, are, you will be amazed at the great things that God can do with you and through you. Now let's move on to verse number nine. And we're going to basically park it here tonight. Yeah, that's right. One verse. 
But we're going to go through a whole bunch of things here this evening, do a study, and, and uh, hopefully it'll be an encouragement to all of you here tonight as well. It says, And when he had spoken these things, it's after Jesus had spoken these things, while they beheld, so they're standing right there with him watching, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. Let's pray together tonight. Dear Lord, we pray for your blessing now upon our service this evening, Lord. I pray for wisdom. I pray for, uh, for Holy Ghost power in the teaching and the preaching of the Word of God, Lord. Help me uh, to expound as you would want things said. And Lord, I just pray that you prepare hearts and open hearts and minds to your preaching tonight. For us in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So we're, we're talking about here about Jesus. He was taken up. He was taken up. What is that? A, it's, it's like a rapture. Uh, Jesus was taken up. He was, he was taken out. He was, he was translated, so to speak. And so we're going to take a look at a few of those here in the Bible this evening. Genesis chapter number 5. I think the first time we see this happening. Genesis chapter number 5, verse number 21 to 24. Now we're talking here about Enoch. It says in verse 21, And Enoch lived sixty and five years, and begat Methuselah. And Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah three hundred years, and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were three hundred, sixty, and five years. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. God took him. Where did God take him? God take him out to eat. God take him to the ball game? You know, no. Where did God, of course, God took him up, took him out, took him alive up to heaven with him. God took him. Uh, the word took means to take, to lead, to conduct, to carry off, to be taken away, to be removed. God removed Enoch from this earth. Enoch walked with God. And God said, okay, your time is up here. I'm taking you home to be with me. And then we read more about this in Hebrews chapter number 11. Hebrews chapter 11, I'll read, a, I'll read just one verse for you here in Hebrews chapter number 11. Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 5 says this, By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Let me tell you something. If you trusted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, guess what? You pleased God. You pleased God the Father. That's why he sent his son to die for us. So when you put your faith and trust in his son, Jesus Christ, you have pleased the Father. Enoch pleased God. The Father here. And it says that he was translated. Okay? So I looked that word up. It means to transfer, to change, to transpose. It means to go or pass over. Pass over. Well, he passed over from this world to the heavenly realm. He passed over from a, a, a human form to a, to a heavenly form, a new body. He, he left this earth. He was carried off, he was taken away, he was transposed, he was changed to that new perfect body. We also read now in 2 Kings chapter 2, talking about another type of a rapture. 2 Kings chapter number 2, You'll turn there with me. Talking about Elijah, 2 Kings chapter number 2. Verse number 9 says, And it came to pass, when they were gone over, that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee, before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. And he said, Thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou see me when I am taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee, but if not, it shall not be so. And it came to pass, as they still went on and talked, that, behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up 
by a whirlwind into heaven. Chariots of fire, horses of fire, spiritual fire in the form of these things, and a, and a whirlwind like a little tornado, and Elijah is caught up by this whirlwind into heaven. It says that he went up. Once again, we'll take a look. Definition, he went up means to go up or to ascend. Ascend, up, up to heaven, to be taken up. Be brought up, be taken away, or to be carried away. And here he was carried away on this chariot of fire. Oh, he went up. So we have a couple of instances there. And then we've got the one that we just read in Acts chapter 1, verse number 9. Acts chapter 1, verse number 9. Talking about Jesus, that when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. Once again now, first you had in Genesis, they took him. And then it said in Hebrews that he was translated. In 2 Kings, he went up. In Acts 1.9, he was taken up. In other words, he was lifted up, he was raised up. And here's the neat thing about it, too. It says there, in the end of verse number 9, and a cloud received him out of their sight. A cloud received him. Oh, we're going to touch that in just a couple minutes here. A cloud received him out of their sight. And then we read in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Now we're looking at uh, evidences of the rapture, descriptions of the rapture itself. Now that the word rapture is not in your Bible, but it is a calling away, a taking away of, uh, of us as the church. It says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51, it says, Behold, I shew you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. We shall, shall. That's not maybe or could be. It's we shall be changed. It's going to happen in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. The words be changed means to be transformed, to exchange one thing for another. So we're going to exchange this body for a new heavenly body. We're going to exchange living on this earth for living in a heavenly realm. Of course, for the time being, until the Lord brings us back again at the end of the tribulation. But we're going to be changed. We're going to be taken up. You know, we read more in the scriptures about the rapture, and that's in 1 Thessalonians, and this is very uh, popular verses in the Bible, often, often quoted, uh, often given for words of assurance to other Christians. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18. Before I read those, you've got to think about the people that, talk, that mock the rapture of the church, yeah. that mock it. They say, oh, you Christians, you think you're something special, don't you? You know, you, you're, you're, you know, you're going to go up. You're, you know, you've heard it. You know what I'm talking about. Or people that mock saying, oh, come on, you've been talking about this for, since, since the apostles were on the earth. They were wondering when it's going to happen. But we also know that the Bible tells us that a thousand years is as a day and a day is a thousand years with the Lord. So if it was 2,000 years ago, to him it's really only like two days. You know, if I told you that, uh, hey, uh, in two days, uh, you know, something big's going to happen. Or maybe in two days you've got some family member or a whole bunch of family members coming to stay with you. You've got two days to get ready. You're going to be busy, aren't you? You're going to be, man, two days is not a lot of time. So when people mock saying, oh, come on, they've been talking about it now for a couple thousand years. No, that's nothing in God's time. And his time is perfect. But the rapture is going to happen, folks. It doesn't matter what the naysayers say, right? All that matters is what God's Word says, and God's Word is pure. God's Word is perfect. 
There's not anything in here that is wrong, incorrect, misleading. King James Bible is the pure Word of God, Amen. preserved Word of God. We've got it in our hands today. We've got it because God wants us to live by every word that He spoke. And we've got it right here in our good old King James Bible. 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 13 says, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we, which are alive and remain, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Yeah. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Wow. Man, you having a tough day today. Let me just tell you something. Someday and someday soon, Jesus is coming back for us. Amen. That ought to bring you a little bit of comfort. Not just a little bit of comfort. That ought to wipe away all the pains and misery and bad thoughts and trials and tribulations and money problems and everything else that comes with this life. Whew. Comfort one another with these words. In verse 17 it says, Then we which are alive and remain shall be Amen. caught up shall be caught up. There you go with those words, shall, again, shall be. It's not a maybe. It's not a could be. It's a shall be. And also, it's futuristic. It shall be. All right, we shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. And there we go with the clouds. That's where Jesus was caught up into the clouds. When he was taken up there after the 40 days he was here on this earth, after his resurrection, he was caught up into the clouds. We're going to be caught up into the clouds. We're going to meet the Lord in the air. Praise the Lord for that. Yeah. Now the Bible says in Romans 10, 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Shall be. That's, that's, that's not a might be or could be. That's a definite 100%. You can count on it. Just like the rapture of the church here. You can count on it 100% without a doubt. Don't lose your hope. Don't lose your peace. Don't lose your joy. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. It says that we'll be gathered up together with them in the clouds. Who are them? Well, the dead in Christ who rose first. Amen. We're going to meet up with them in the clouds. And then... We're also going to meet up with the Lord himself. In verse 16, it says, Therefore the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall, ri shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. It doesn't say to meet him in heaven. We're going to meet him in the air up there in the clouds. He's going to be there with us. Oh, praise God for that day. Wow. Wow. It could be tonight, folks. It could be before we leave here tonight. You see what's going on in the world. You see all the problems. You see that if you follow, look at what's going on in the United States is horrific. Where we have gone away from God. It's, it's, it's sickening. The fact that we were founded as a Christian nation and and they came here because of religious persecution and brought their values, their ideals, brought the Bible. And now we take a look at all these people that used to be, shall we say, pro-God are now anti-God. Yeah. What used to be right is wrong. What used to be wrong is right. If anything, if anything comes up for a vote these days, and if it's anti-God, it gets approved. And if it's pro-Bible and if it agrees with the Bible, then no, got to change that. 
That's Satan working hard in our society today. Boy, it's just crazy what's going on out there today. But, you know, it's not about what's going on in the United States. Our focus has to be on the nation of Israel. That's the apple of God's eye. That's where everything is going to be determined. Yes, God's going to wait until that last soul gets saved. But I think that last soul is going to get saved when he finally says, okay, that's it. In, in yeah. Israel, we got to, something has to happen here. And so you've got to keep an eye on what's going on over there. And hopefully you, uh, you do have an, an, a way of, of finding information that you don't get on our regular news stations. And there are ways of doing that, and I can give you some after the service if you're interested. We've got a couple of good, uh, at least one very good information source right from Galilee from a Christian uh, Jew. And uh, he's great, and he's a great preacher as well, and, and he gives updates. And he used to be in the military there, and he knows a lot of information, a lot of updates. Anyhow, uh, so keep an eye on Israel. So shall we ever be with the Lord. And again, how long is ever? Ever is a long time, I think. It's a long time. So if it says that we shall ever be with the Lord, that means that the believer, the Christian, those that have put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ, they have what is called eternal security. Once you're saved, you're always saved. Interesting thing in the Bible, in the four Gospels, the word believe or some form of the word believe occurs in the book of Matthew 11 times. It occurs in the book of Mark 17 times. It occurs in the book of Luke 11 times. But in the book of John, it occurs 101 times. 101. Everything in John's gospel pushes the reader towards belief in Jesus Christ for salvation. He is the only way to heaven. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. So John's gospel pushes the reader towards salvation. The Bearing Precious Seed Ministry, which we support, puts out or prints out copies of Scripture, particularly, I mean, they do whole Bibles, but they also do a lot of copies of John and Romans, as you're familiar with. The book of John and the book of Rom, uh, Romans are very effective books from the Word of God. The book of John, again, 101 times tells people to believe. Uh, Romans, you have the Romans Road. So these are great books of the Bible for, a, for anyone. If they're just starting, they want to learn, they want to read the Bible. Maybe they're not Christians. You lead them or you tell them, read the book of John, read the book of Romans. If they do that, there's a very good chance that the Holy Spirit's going to speak to their heart and tell them, wow, wow, wow. Or maybe they'll have questions and come back to you and want to know more. So the book of John and Romans, great. Uh, tell people to, to read it. New, new, new Christians should also be reading those books because it gives them a good foundation of their new belief that they have. So John writes about believing. But John also writes about eternal security. We're going to take a look at a few of these verses in the book of John. I know we're studying Acts, but like I told you, we're going to tie this all into that verse number 9 there in, in Acts chapter number 1. Uh, John chapter number 3. You may be familiar with this verse. You may have heard it once or twice before. Again, John also writes about eternal security. He talks about believing. He talks about eternal security. Once you're saved, always saved. John 3.16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Everlasting life. Everlasting life. John chapter 5, verse 24. You can mark these in your Bible. These are great verses to have if you're talking with someone about their eternal security. How you know you're saved. Once you're saved, you're always saved. John chapter 5, verse 24 says this. Verily, verily. That means truly, truly. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life, and shall not 
come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. John chapter 6, verse 37. The Bible says, All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. You come to Jesus, you're secure. Uh, all right, so you come to Jesus, you get saved, and then you go out and you do some dastardly deed and huge sin, or, or you live a wicked life, and, well, praise God, you're still saved. Amen. He's not going to cast you out. Oh, you're not going to have fellowship. You've got to get right, get back where you were to have that fellowship with Him. Don't expect the blessings to be raining down upon you either when you're living an evil, wicked life. Even though you're saved, you can still live an evil, wicked life. Come on, folks, you know. You know of some, you know of some preachers. You know some preachers that fell to sin. Were they saved? Of course they were saved. But boy, were they attacked by the devil. And they succumbed to the temptation. They still saved? Yep. Still saved. Can they do what they once did? No. They don't have the effectiveness that they once had. But hopefully they're still doing something for God. So that was 637. How about John chapter 10? John chapter 10, verses 27 to 29. John chapter 10, starting at verse 27, it says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. When you get saved, when you trust Jesus Christ as your Savior, He is also the chief shepherd, the great shepherd. You hear His voice, you follow Him. Amen. People that are not saved, they're not in the sheepfold. They just don't understand, and they just don't follow Him. Verse 28 says, And I give unto them eternal life. So who's He given that eternal life unto? His sheep. Not just anybody. Only those that have called upon Jesus, asked Him to be their Savior. They are now underneath the, the Good Shepherd, the Great Shepherd. They're now His sheep. It says, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall possibly perish. Come on now, are you reading it? They shall never perish. Amen. Amen. They shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. John writes about believing. John writes about eternal security. And one more, one more to look up here in 1 John chapter number 10. Again, this is the same John that wrote the Gospel of John. I love these verses. Boy, if you're a soul winner, if you're a soul winner, uh, let me tell you something. These verses right here are great in a great, now, you can use this at the end of your, your say, your, your presentation of the gospel, or you can lead off with it. Because you can ask someone, and you might say, hey, do you know for heaven? you're going to heaven someday? Someone might say, oh, you can't know for sure. Oh, yes, you can. Let me show you what the Word of God says. And it's always great to just say to them, look, it, this verse in the Bible just, just, Blew my mind when I heard it. I couldn't believe it. Because I was taught, now again, I grew up as a Catholic. I was taught you basically didn't know for sure. You did all these works, you did all these things, but you still didn't know for sure. But that is against what God's Word says. Amen. First John chapter, chapter, number, uh, chapter number 5. Sorry, first John chapter number 5, verse number 11. And this is the record. That God hath given to us eternal life. And this life is in His Son. He that hath the Son hath life. And he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. So you got Jesus? You've got life. And we're talking eternal life here. Amen. Eternal life. You don't have Jesus? You do not have eternal life. And then it says there in verse 13. And this is that verse I was telling you about. 
These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God. That's for those that have called upon Jesus. Here's what the Bible says. That ye may know, ye may know, that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. Whew! You can know. You can know. That is a great verse. I mean, really, there are no stinkers in the whole book, right? But that one there, boy, that's just got some extra power to it. That's got a special place in all of our hearts as believers. Remember, wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Comfort. Someday, we're going up. Praise God. Comfort. Comfort with the thought of a world that's in turmoil? No, of course not. Comfort with the thought of going through tribulation? No. No. But we're going to live in a world of turmoil. And, and, and we're not going to go through the tribulation, though. There are some people, and I know some people, that still believe that they're going to be mid-trib or whatever, post-trib. It's like, come on, man, just read your book. We're not going to be going through the tribulation. All right, I lied to you. I'm going to read one more scripture here. Revelation chapter 4. Revelation chapter number 4. <clears throat> Verses 1 and 2. Now, what you have there in chapters 2 and 3, you've got the seven church ages. Remember that? We've talked about that in church before. You've got your seven uh, actual, literal churches, and then seven church ages that are defined by those churches. And we see in chapter number 4, verse number 1. After this, after what? After that final church age, that Laodicean church age, that church age that we're in right now, where the people are neither hot nor cold, they're lukewarm. Jesus is knocking on the outside of the church door, wants to get in. They're not letting him in. He's not there anymore. And then it says there, chapter 4, verse 1, after this, that's after the church ages, I looked. And behold, a door was open in heaven. Heaven's gates open. And the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, <laughs> and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. Come up hither. Yep. The rapture. Come up hither. And how long did it take? Well, the first two words in the next verse. And immediately. Immediately. In the twinkling of an eye. Immediately. Come up. In other words, arise. Again, this same John who wrote about believing 101 times. Who's doing that? Yeah. Same John who wrote about believing 101 times in the book of John. Steve, can you do anything about that? There we go. John who wrote about believing 101 times in the book of John, the same one, wrote about eternal security of the believer at least five different times. And the same John writes under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit of God what will happen immediately after the last church age comes to a close. He says, come up hither. Come up means to ascend, to rise, to go up. The word hither means here, to this place. Come on now, any of you ever had a parent that said, come hither. Come hither. Come hither. You, come, yep. come hither. No. <laughs> well, the Lord's going to say, come up hither. Oh, come on up. Woo! Gladly. <laughs> I'm ready. And what place would that be? Well, it says, Behold, a door was opened in heaven. Come up hither immediately to heaven. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Comfort one another with these words. I'll pick up next week where we left off here. Bottom line is, this earth is not my home. Amen. I'm just a passing through. 
Hebrews 13, 14 says, For here have we no continuing city, but we seek one to come. Here is in this place. A continuing city is a remaining or an abiding or a lasting or an enduring city. This earth will not endure. We're not here forever again. We're just passing through. We're, we're waiting for that new Jerusalem. Amen. That new city. Oh, praise God for that. Praise the Lord. Yep. It can be difficult in this day and age that we live in. There will be mockers. There will be scorners. There will be those that just try to beat you down as a Christian. Slam the door in your face. Mock. You know how it is. The rapture. You folks believe in a rapture. Well, the bottom line is, I believe God's word. Amen. God's word is the final authority in all matters of faith and practice. His word's perfect. It's preserved. It's been published over the years. And if God tells us to live by every word that proceedeth out of his mouth, there has to be a book somewhere that has every one of his words in it. Pure, precise. And that's why we believe the King James Bible. Because that is exactly what we have. God's perfect and pure words. All right. Let's just say a quick prayer there. Lord, we're grateful we can spend time in your word. Lord, we know the rapture's coming. Lord, Jesus was taken up right there after his 40-day, after his resurrection, his 40-day ministry there. Lord, he was taken up. They saw him go up. Went up into the clouds, Lord. He was brought up to be with the Father. And someday, and someday soon, I hope, the same will happen with the church. Oh, Lord, we look forward to that day. But until that day comes, find us busy doing your work. Find us faithful. Don't find us hiding in the closet, afraid of what's going on around us, Give us the power that we need, that Holy Ghost power, to go out and do your work and do your will until you call us home. Thank you, Lord. Bless us now, Lord. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. Let's go to the prayer list here tonight.